But we begin this morning with the disturbing deaths of three mentally ill prison inmates in Florida. It appears they were tortured and abused by prison guards. This is one of the victims. His name is Darren Rainey. He was a 50-year-old mentally ill inmate at the Dade Correctional Institution, that is a state prison in Deep South Dade. A guard there put Rainey into a scalding hot shower for one hour. It was supposed to be punishment for defecating in his cell and then refusing to clean it up. But Rainey was left in that locked shower stall for that hour. He screamed in agony. No one came to his help. His skin was so badly burned that it had shriveled from his body. Miami Herald investigative reporter Julie K. Brown broke that story about the death of Darren Rainey and two other deaths of mentally ill inmates in the state. Dr. George Mellencrot, well, it's not doctor, he is George Mellencrot. He is a licensed mental health worker, and he was working at the Correctional Institution in South Dade where uh, Darren Rainey died. He filed numerous complaints about the systematic abuse of mentally ill inmates, and for his trouble, he was fired. Judge Steve Leifman is a nationally and internationally recognized leader for reform in the treatment of the mentally ill involved in the criminal justice system. He is largely responsible for more than 4,000 police officers in Miami-Dade being trained in how to deal with the mentally ill. To all of you, good morning. morning. Great to have morning. you come in. Uh, Julie, some outstanding reporting. Tell us about Darren Rainey and how he died. Mr. Rainey was an inmate who was serving a two-year prison stretch for a drug charge. He had um, uh, apparently done something in his cell, we believe. From what we've heard, he had defecated in his cell, and the guards wanted him to clean himself up. He had refused. So they, uh, what we do know from the little amount of information that we've been given from the State Department of Corrections is that a guard placed him in his cell shortly before 8 o'clock. Um, this was two years ago, September yeah. Uh, June, sorry, 23rd, June 23rd, 2012. Yeah. And um, from what we understand from people who were there at the time, he had, they turned on a shower. This was a shower that had not previously been used because the controls on the interior of the shower, by the way, this shower is more like a phone booth. Yeah. And the, the, sh the, the controls were broken, and they were only controlled by the main switch, by the guards themselves. And he had been placed in there, and the, the controls were turned on, and apparently he had been screaming in there for help. I won't do it again. And the, all the inmates that were in that unit at yeah. the time could hear him screaming. Yeah. And it wasn't for quite some time, depending on whose statement you... you it, it was at least an hour that he was in there screaming. Yeah, yeah. Uh, George Mellencrat, you were uh, employed there. You were providing mental health services mm -hmm. at the Dade Correctional Institution. When did you hear about Rainey's death, and what did you do about it? Well, I I had been fired uh, ten months previously, uh, essentially for speaking out against inmate abuse. Uh, an inmate named Joseph Swilling was beaten, and I refused to stay silent about it. My coworker, 10 months later, called me up and said, they killed him. And that was the first instance that, that I heard, heard about it. it. Yeah, now you had gone uh, earlier to the warden of DCI. You talked about the systematic abuse that you said you had personally witnessed. Uh, uh, what did the warden do? Well, he tasked me with doing incident reports as I heard abuse from the inmates in my unit. And so I had done three or four of these reports, uh, and then I was fired. Yeah. Uh, you went to the Department of Justice, too, to try to get some action, did you? Yes. Um, immediately after I had heard of Rainey's death, I, through a circuitous route, ended up interviewing with FBI agents. Mm -hmm. And they were interested in putting a wire on my former coworker to uh, as as ostensibly find out what these guards were doing, except that we didn't have any interaction with these guards. But then as the, the, the thing unfolded, eventually I sent in a complaint to the Department of Justice yeah. in, in Washington. Yeah. You know, but Judge Leifman, the fact is it's almost two years and nothing has happened. Now, at the at the forum that you uh, organized and put together of mental health providers, consumers, and uh, police agencies on Thursday in Miami, uh, you described what happened to Rainey as murder. 
It's horrific, and, it, and it's hard to believe this goes on in the United States and in our own state. It's unacceptable. And part of the problem, and there's absolutely no excuse for what went on, is that we have reduced access to community services so much mm -hmm. that so many people are ending up in the criminal justice system. In fact, the fastest growing, they call it a subpopulation, of people in Florida's, mental, uh, in Florida's prisons are people with mental illnesses. It's grown yeah. by 178%. Yeah. Let me cite those years. figures if I could, Steve. Sure. In 2000, uh, I think you've told me this, 6,800 right. prison inmates were classified as mentally ill. In 2014, nearly 18,000. Yeah. I mean, that's just a huge it growth. Is. And they didn't train the guards to handle it, and there's apparently a culture in that in these facilities that is horrible and unacceptable. And so you have people supposedly protecting people and guarding people that they don't know how to handle. And yeah. so they exacerbate the problem. Most of these individuals have serious trauma before they get into the prison. They're getting re-traumatized and they're abusing them as a result. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Julie, uh, when you have tried to reach out and ask for public records from the State Department of Corrections, uh, you've been stonewalled a lot. We've been stonewalled a lot and, and more um, concerning to us is the fact that much of the information that we are receiving has been heavily redacted. Yeah. Uh, there was one witness that we know of who was an inmate who uh, wrote a letter to the Inspector General's office at the time this happened, said that he saw it, he was asked to clean up the crime scene, those were his right. words, and that he was very disturbed. He called it a killing, and uh, he was... Was this uh, Harold Hempstead? This was... No, this was, this an was another one? This was another one, mm -hmm. and, and the inspe they, they did interview him, um, but they never uh, transcribed the interview. We were the ones that recently ordered a transcription of that, so it's very telling to us that, that the police didn't order a, a, a transcript of this interview of this witness. Um, DOC apparently didn't order the transcript, so he gave his statement. And, and in any event, when we received the transcript, literally every single thing in the transcript was redacted. Is, is redacted. Yeah. Out. So you have a piece of paper that essentially is blacked out. Most of it is uh, is blacked out. Then, uh, subsequent to the death of Darren Rainey. Another inmate in that mental health unit named Richard Mayer, age 40, hung himself from the air conditioning vent, but he wrote a suicide note uh, before he died alleging all kinds of uh, abuse. Uh, describe what, what, what did the uh, mayor's note well, say? Well, Mr. Mayer had um, already um, filed a grievance before he committed suicide, alleging all these incidences in detail. And the inspector general uh, wanted the names of some of these guards that had committed some of these things. They were uh, sexual assaults against him. They were... Uh, they, they, there's a, apparently some kind of a practice allegedly in the prison called empty or air trays where they s starve these uh, patients as well. They just give them they empty deny trays. Them food. Skip deny, trays. Skip we trays. Call them skip, skip trays. Skip, skip trays. Skip, skip trays. Skipping yeah. trays. Oh, skipping trays. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he had, uh, in any event, um, the inspector general apparently said, well, you're not giving us any names. We don't have anything to go on. So that grievance went nowhere in particular except the guards that yeah. were guarding him knew he made the complaint and the uh, mistreatment continued to the point where he yeah. felt um, compelled to commit suicide yeah. and he did and he did say in his suicide note okay I'm naming names now and he right. named all the names of mm -hmm. everyone involved um, all the right, guards. So police authorities the the prison system has names and uh, I mean the question George is what has been done to your knowledge? In my experience, this is just par for the course. When I was actually there and I wouldn't sit still for that beating and I started to name names in the incident report, I did an incident report regarding the beating, nothing happened. The guards, the guards who beat him were still working there and, and I no punishment, I was in no investigation. In fact, some of them had been promoted. Some of them involved ha had yeah. been promoted. Yeah, it, 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 it goes to the double stigma. They're already stigmatized because they have a mental illness, but now they're criminals with mental illness, so they're almost considered subhuman and no one's going to listen. Yeah. And but for the you know reporting by Julie, none of us ever would have known this. That's absolutely right. I certainly wouldn't have known. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and, and the Department of Corrections doesn't send out news releases right. uh, with any of this stuff. Uh, Judge Leifman, I have to say, um, uh, to my knowledge, Governor Scott, in 
light of your reporting, Julie, uh, has not called in the head of the Department of Corrections and demanded answers. Uh, frankly, you would hope that he would do that. Well, I'd hope a lot of people would do that. Yeah. The Justice Department should be there, the state attorney should be there, because it happened in Miami-Dade County, so she has jurisdiction, and the governor should be there. And, and you know, none of us can turn our heads, because it's going to continue to happen or get worse if there isn't swift action taken. Well, that's going to be the last word, but we are going to follow this. And, Julie, thanks for your reporting. I know, unfortunately, there's more to come, isn't there? Yes. Okay. There All right. George Mellencrat, thanks for coming in. Appreciate it very much.